this time I invite the baptism party to come forward. Our service continues with the service of holy baptism on page 268. Page 268. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The last chapter of Mark our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own, and we would be lost forever unless delivered from sin and death and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son Jesus Christ to atone for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How is your child named? Elizabeth Jean Beckerman, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart. To mark you as what redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts of the Red Sea. Yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away from sin. We pray that you would behold Elizabeth according to your boundless mercy, that you would bless her with true faith by your Holy Spirit, through the saving flood of this, that through this saving flood all sin in her, which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since, will be drowned and die. Grant that she would be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that along with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the Church has observed the custom of appointing um, sponsors for baptismal candidates and for catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. You, then, are to pray for them, support her in her ongoing instruction, and nurture her in the Christian faith, and encourage her towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. You are, at all times, to be examples to her of holy life of faith, of faith in the life of Christ, and of love for the neighbor. Is it, then, your intention to serve Elizabeth as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. May God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace, fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased, and he said to them, let the little children come to me, do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Since Elizabeth is a little too young to answer these questions on her own, um, we, the congregation, will answer these questions on her behalf. Elizabeth Jean Beckerman, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I 
Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Elizabeth, you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. <laughs> Elizabeth Jean Beckerman, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this white towel, this white garment, to show you that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. It covers all of our sins. So you will stand one day without fear before God's judgment seat to receive the inheritance prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. Today we just witnessed a birthday. We saw Elizabeth born into the family of Christ. And on birthdays, we light candles. I'm not going to get a stare. She's too young. <laughs> but receive that burning light to show her that she has received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you might meet him with joy, enter with him in the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Our elder, I can say something. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Please rise for prayer. <laughs> Almighty and most merciful God, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, that you have granted Elizabeth the new birth and holy baptism and have made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that, as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she might faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your most holy name. And finally, along with all of your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, let us pray. Lord, giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child, and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift which you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptisms, so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation which you have given to them as well. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. You may return to your seats. Our service continues with the Confession on Absolution on page 203. We remain standing. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, 
God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our intro today is taken from Psalm 39. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. O Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions, and make me not the scorn of the fool. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace in my tears. Glory be to the Father. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the hope of righteousness. So govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may preserve in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is for the last Sunday of the church years from Isaiah chapter 51. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arms for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in a like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Luke or from Jude. 
But you, beloved, build yourself selves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise to the gospel. St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Lord, Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves, home, he puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I invite the children to come forward for a message just for them. Have a seat. Come on up. Have a seat. Have a seat. Come sit down. something before? Yes. You've forgotten things? What kind of things have you forgotten? What have you forgotten? Um, when I was on my farm, I was waiting for all the cake and, and forgot, my, I couldn't forgot my suitcase. Forgot your suitcase? That's a horrible thing to do on vacation. Anybody else forgotten anything? What did you forget? <coughs> um, I forgot my friend at my house. You forgot your friend at your house? That's probably a challenging situation too. I forgot my homework once when I was little. You guys ever forget your homework when you go to school? Yeah? What did you forget? My father went to Yeah? Man, that's lots of things to forget. So we forget all kinds of things in our lives. Uh, do, you think, do you think that Jesus forgets? I forgot my favorite stuffies. You forgot your favorite stuffies? Yeah? Does Jesus forget? No. No, Jesus doesn't forget. And no matter how many times we forget, 
Jesus will never forget us that Jesus made you part of his family. We saw that in baptism today. Just a minute. Jesus will always remember you and one day bring you into his, into his, home, his house that doesn't end. So what I want to do today is I want to thank God for not forgetting us. Yes, you have your hand up. Oh, you did. Yeah, well, Jesus doesn't forget us. So today, let's pray to God and thank him for remembering us. So I'll say the words. You guys pray them to God, and the congregation behind you will join you. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for remembering me. Help me to love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming, guys. You can go back to your seats. Our service continues, our service continues with our next day. to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who loved you with his very life. Amen. It really doesn't take a long time to forget something. Like, by the time that you finally get out to the garage, you can't remember why you went out there in the first place, and it doesn't have to be the garage. It can be literally any room in your house. Just moments after you need something, you can't remember what it is. 
I mean, just days or even weeks after an event, uh, like, like the global supply chain shortage caused by that ship, can't even remember what that ship was. Um, our world has just seemingly forgotten about things, just kind of moves on to the next big thing one after another. And even though you are baptized into Christ Jesus, it really is a, 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 daily, a daily battle to remember what that means, to remember who you are in Christ Jesus, that you are a, a child of God, no more and, and no less. It's also very easy for us to forget the book of Jude too. The book of Jude is just 25 verses. One of the shortest books of the Bible, 25 verses, just, just one chapter. But Jude has a very important message for us, especially on today, the last Sunday of the church year, when we look ahead to Jesus' return on the very last day. Today is, is not about forgetting, or to say another way, today is a day about remembering. How do we remember? And so the book of Jude teaches us that the church remembers Jesus because Jesus always remembers his church. And that's not as obvious of a message as it first may seem. Remember, it's easy to forget. It's, it's happened before where the church has, has forgotten about Jesus. So what happens when you forget who Jesus is, what Jesus has said? Well, Jude wrote his, this little book, again, these 25 verses, Scholars think right around the year like, like 68, so about 35-ish years after Jesus died, rose again, and ascended into heaven. At this point in history, most of the 12 apostles had died, and Jude, who, who wasn't an apostle, um, he, was, he was compelled by the Holy Spirit to write this, this short little letter to the church and in their place. And in the start of his letter, he, he states this. It's, it's, uh, it's to remind you in, in verse 5. Um, to remind you that although you once fully knew it, that the Jesus who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, he afterward destroyed those people who, who didn't believe in him. See, the church had forgotten about Jesus. They had forgotten about Jesus and his promise to one day return to this world. They had forgotten that Jesus will come again as, as, as Savior for those who believe in him, but also as a destroyer for those who do not. Just as happened with those Israelites way back at the end of the exodus from Egypt. Having forgotten about the reality of who Jesus is, some Christians change the grace of God into, into sensuality. They, they turn forgiveness into a license to go and sin, saying things like, I like to sin, God likes to forgive, you know, what's the problem here? And in doing so, they deny that Jesus is the only God, the only master, the only, the only Lord. And so this little short book of Jude, is a, it's a call to remembrance. It's a call for us to remember who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And remember who Jesus and what Jesus is going to do, that he is both, both your savior, but he's also coming as the destroyer. So what happens when you forget that Jesus will one day return as the savior of those who believe? Well, when you forget Jesus, you you start to see problems, and you see problems that are, that are in our world today. There are so many problems, I don't have to listen, list all of them to you. If you, don't, if you don't participate in any of these problems to one degree or another, then perhaps you're just trying to distance yourself from them by, by thinking back in time and remembering those good old days, believing the answers to our problems of this world is simply just to, to go back to the way things used to be, or maybe to at least try. Or, or maybe we're tempted to believe that the solution to our world's problems is, is because of someone or something other than Jesus. But Jude wants us to remember who Jesus is, that Jesus alone is the savior of this world. It's, it's not me, it's not you, it's not getting back to how things once were. The answer to our sins is Jesus. Jesus has saved you from sin and death. Jesus has saved you by his own death and his resurrection, and he, he saves you even on this day through his word and through, through baptisms, which we got to witness this morning. And Jesus will save you again finally on the last day when he makes a new world and, and brings you into it. But what happens when you forget that Jesus will return as destroyer 
for those who don't believe? Well, you, you see yourself as someone securely saved. You're, you're tempted, just as the church of all times and in all places has been tempted. You're tempted to be comfortable in your ways, to be comfortable even in your own sins, living, living the way you want to live, giving yourself you know, license or freedom to, to fall into patterns of thinking and patterns of doing that are not in accordance with the Word of God. You convince yourself that you don't need to worry about anything because Jesus hasn't come back and he probably won't come back anytime soon. But remember instead that Jesus is coming back and he will one day come back as Savior, yes, but also as judge and destroyer. And so Jude wants us to remember Jesus. So he calls you to repentance. He calls you to trust in the forgiveness of Christ, to, to live a new life according to that word of God. And he calls you to remember that those who do forget will be destroyed in an eternal, never-ending punishment. And as frightening as that is, how comforting is it then to remember that Jesus never forgets about you. See, God addresses our forgetting that Jesus is the Savior, the Destroyer, by reminding us the same way he did for the early church. He reminds us through this little book of Jude to prepare us for the future by, by pointing us to the past. Remember that God has called you to faith, that he loves you more than his own life, and he keeps you in the faith. That reminds you that God has promised to keep you from stumbling and to present you as blameless, as he says in verse 24, on the day of God's glorious return. And so this, we might always remember who Jesus is, that he hears your prayers, that, that echoes the thief on the cross. Jesus, remember you when you come into your kingdom. And he does. He remembers you. That he has always been and always will be mindful of you. That he, as he says in verse 25, who has all glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time and even now and forever, that this one remembers you. He, he calls you by name. He loves you and he brings you together into his one holy church. He first called you through waters of holy baptism when he joined you to himself and to all others who believe in him. And he continues to love you by feeding you the sacrament and these gifts from the cross. His promise is to keep you in the one true faith by his word and spirit until the day that we see him face to face. In our, in our prayer that I read this morning, on the collect of the day, uh, it's, it's the sign, and for today it's the last Sunday of the church here. Uh, we prayed this just a few minutes ago. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit. We might be mindful of your return. You might, we might persevere in bold faith and on, on holiness and living. Jesus does live and reign, and he hears this prayer that we prayed this morning, and he answers you. He remembers you, he emboldens you, and he encourages you and strengthens you to persevere in faith until he one day returns. And so we do remember Jesus, even if we can't seem to remember everything. Today, in, in the Gospel of the Gospel, in the, in the letter of Jude, Jude gives us seven activities in these short verses of things to help us remember. You probably weren't counting them when we read through it a few minutes ago, so I will let's read through it again now. These, these seven things on the Jesus that we are encouraged to do. The first four of these are activities, um, encouragements for ourselves um, as, as believers to one another. He says, build yourselves up for the most holy faith. Faith lives by its, by its object, by trusting in the one that you believe in. So build each other up, encourage one another to continue to listen to the word of God and believe in Jesus. Then he says, pray in the Holy Spirit. This encouragement is to offer a prayer that's informed to God's word through the, through the Spirit which works faith in us. This is again a step to look forward to keep us in the life of Christ. The third one, keep yourself in the love of God. This is encouragement to stay in the love of God, to remember your baptism, to always look to what Jesus has done in the moments of, your, the moments of hardship in your life, but also the moments of blessings. Number four, Wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mercy is what Jesus gives us. It's what happens when we don't get what we deserve. This encouragement from Jude is to expect mercy from our Savior, that he's coming, yes, as judge, but he's coming as your Savior. 
Then after those four things we're supposed to do, he then offers us these, these three different ways that he himself lives. He has three ways that we should re- live in relationship with one another. When he says this, verse 22, for those who doubt. Um, have mercy on those who doubt. There is only one judge. Jesus allowed himself to be rejected by the world, and his message to the world through you has the same character that it can be rejected. This is an encouragement to keep on showing mercy. Um, everybody experiences doubts, and we encourage one another through those doubts. And we might save others, as he says. Jesus Christ has saved us from the wrath of God. He's, he's snatched us from the destruction that we have earned and truly deserve. And since we are snatched from the judgment by his grace, we then share that grace, tell that story with others that God would snatch them too and save them from their sins. And finally, that we would hate even the garment stained by this flesh. When you were baptized, Christ clothed you in the robe of his own righteousness. How can individuals or congregations knowingly and willingly soil this gift with unrepentant sin? So instead, let's, let's encourage one another to repent our sins, to receive the forgiveness we have in Christ. So we have these seven things here, these short few verses at the end of our text. Um, how do we remember those? Well, we do it by remembering Jesus. These seven things are responses to what God has done for us in Christ. Remembering is always like this. You can't remember without the thing taking place. You can't live according to God's word, apart from what God has already done and promised to do for you. So on this day, remember what God has done. How Jesus gave his life for you. How he he conquered death for you. How he sent his spirit that you might believe his promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation. God has promised to return. To return in glory for you as Savior. He's also promised to destroy those who don't believe, but he promises again to save those who do. So let us listen to this promise. As he says uh, says in John chapter 14, The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all of the things which I have taught you. Jesus remembers you. That's how you remember him. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, and now and forevermore. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of the church. Please rise. In our prayers today, we remember Goldie, who has been placed in the hospice, and for Carrie, who was in hospital with Goldie. Let us pray. As we wait patiently for the Lord's return, let us pray for our gracious God on behalf of the whole Christian church and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God and Father, give your holy church throughout the world your grace to serve you with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure till the end. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, open the mouths of the pastors of this circuit, our district, and our synod, and give them words to testify to your love in Christ Jesus and the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know all of our anxieties and our fears. Grant to those troubled and minded spirit the strength to cast every care on you. According to your will, give them quietness of heart and a firm trust in your mercies, which you have shown to us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, place the lonely in the family of your holy church, that they might find peace in Christ and fulfillment and loving service to their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, make the leaders of our nation to walk in the ways of justice and truth, that they might use the power vested in them to protect the weak and the innocent. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in the face of natural disasters, of wars, famines, and troubles of all kinds, Fill our hearts with repentance and humility, that in every circumstance we may trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, look with favor upon all of those who are in need. Fill the hungry with good things. Give the poor and unemployed gainful employment. Heal the sick, especially carry and Goldie. Comfort those who mourn, and watch over all of those who travel. Be with those on the prayers of this congregation, and those who name before you in our hearts.
Bless those, bless those whom we have named. Be near the dying. Give courage to those who suffer oppression and need. Defend the orphans and the widows. And protect the weak, the unborn, and the aged. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, make each communicant worthy to receive Christ's body and blood this day, that they would do so with repentance, heart, and in faith, not to their judgment, but for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. additional prayer request. Again, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that she would be with Mary, who was diagnosed with cancer, that she would heal her and strengthen her and give her courage for the days ahead. Jesus Christ, our Lord. For those of you joining us online, we thank you for being here. The Lord bless and preserve your coming and going from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. Those of us gathered here in the sanctuary,